It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Everywhere you go, take a look at the five and ten. It's glistening once again with candy canes and silver lanes that glow. <laughs> it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Toys in every store. Stop me whenever. I'm, I'm enjoying it, honestly. I was about to stop you, and then I was just like, it's got, it was getting me in the in the mood for Christmas. Uh, welcome. Uh, the prettiest sight to see is the holly that will be on your own door. We did it. The Thanks. other thing that's amazing that people can't see were the hand motions. Like, if you're listening to this as a podcast, Dave was doing these great little delicate hand motions to go along with that that were just <laughs> superb. Yep, yep. Uh, it's a far cry from uh, from Stone Temple Pilots last week. Uh, <laughs> thanks for joining us. If you're on the podcast or YouTube or wherever you are enjoying this episode, this is Venture Ventures D&D Actual Play Show with a bunch of funny people, improvisers, writers, just overall good people. And oh, we thanks. hope we hope you're having a good holiday season. Uh, this will be the last episode of the year before uh, before the new year. So 2019 will be the next time we see you. And um, yeah, let's go ahead and um go around the table just uh say your character's name and class and we'll do the plugs at the end of the show so dave go ahead hey how's it going i'm dave roderick and i'm playing a kenku warlock Catherine. hello i'm Catherine. i'm a radia night song who is a drow monk class richard hi i'm richard Cardenas, and i'm playing nihilus nightmareth who is a uh, classless Classless. And also playing. He has uh, no class. <laughs> uh, no, he is also a, he playing is Sierra Sierra. Oh, yeah. And, and, and I'll be yeah. Uh, subbing Sierra Sierra, a wizard bullfrog. <laughs> <laughs> bullfrog? What is she? She's a furbog. Balrog? <laughs> I think he went Lord of the Rings with the first try with the Balrog, and then. It was a good try, Furbolg. Uh, I, I don't even one thing would work. Yeah, no, you were close enough. Everyone understood. Uh, anyways, I'm the dungeon master, Jake Friday. I'll be playing the world and everything else. Uh, <laughs> what should class? we tell them about Hottie? Should we tell them about Hottie? Oh yeah, Hottie is there as an NPC. He's a Minotaur, Hottie Cowpier, and um, Catherine will be playing Hottie or be. Mechanically playing hottie, we'll f we'll flip back and forth. Uh, doing. I our... do the I do the battle actions. You do the role play. Yeah, exactly. So a little recap of last week. Uh, the group, the big bedfellows, defeated the two out of three of what they think are hags that have been terrorizing the Gid Ward of Anista, which is the section of the city with a bunch of orphanages. And um, they fought this coven beast, which was two hags that melded together a la Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure Station. Uh, if you guys remember Station from that movie, they kind of merged together into a lump of goo and then came out as one monster. They defeated that monster not before Sarah was knocked unconscious three or four or five times. And yeah. uh, I think a radio was knocked unconscious once. Uh, it was a it was a battle, and um, but they defeated her and her uh, paintings and tapestries that animated and tried to attack them, as well as a few other things. Um, after that, they searched the room and found a note uh, to presumably to the two hags and money, a stash of money, as well as a drow house insignia, um, and yeah, before the hags were taken down, they tried to escape with their lives through a secret passageway that went north, they didn't quite make it because 
uh, the big bedfellows ended them. And, uh, yeah, so that's where we left off. And at this point, I'll say, um, Sarah checks, you guys checked on Siren, the green iridescent Pomeranian, and she went around and ate some things like she does, but she's okay. And so is, uh, well, table. Sa well, Sarah w went to, goes to check on the table and the table's in pieces, the baby animated table. <laughs> um, no! How did that happen? Well, she fell unconscious three, three or four times. <laughs> and so repeated, no. uh, she had her in her pack and repeated, R. um, R. Diana Ross. Oh my and gosh. I like how you guys all had like different names for the baby table. I know. Um, what did I, I'm trying to find what I actually put in the um, uh, in my notes, which was not Diana Ross. But yeah. let's call it Diana <laughs> Ross from now on. Justin called uh, called it Mahog. That's what I put in my notes. Yeah. Felt like. <laughs> and um, Gannon, the kid, your your fanboy, uh, the kid who you guys were thinking about <laughs> using as bait, didn't come down there with you guys, but you guys are underneath okay. in like a a uh, dungeon area you've searched this this large experimentation room and there's now a secret passage leading north what would you guys like to do the passage that you came through or that you slid down essentially so blocked off you so you're confirming that we killed the hag. Yeah, they're one, the, one, uh, one well, hag. You killed two one. of the three. Correct. Yeah. They they melded into one, and then when the, you killed them, they went back into their original forms, and they're and in the northeastern part of the room. They're lying dead. Do we think that either of them looked like or was Auntie Nani? Yeah, you know, I mean, you don't know what their original form was because. They were using, um, you know, magical disguises so they wouldn't terrify the children. Uh, but you're, I mean, yeah. I'll just say, what? yeah, these are, <laughs> these are them. These are two these, of the but, three. But, that okay, didn't so, answer my question, but okay. I, <laughs> you, I think we should just assume that they're the other two uh, okay. orphanage household. That's, yeah, okay. They're so auntie, one of them is Auntie Nani, and one of oh. them is... So, okay. Is, another one. Is another one. So okay. Auntie Nani's dead. That's what I'm trying to figure out. Okay. Okay, cool. Um, and then uh, Aradia immediately goes, before we do anything, I need to be healed desperately. I need healing. And Nihilus well, says, I can, mm, yeah, no, can you I, look good. I can give you one of the, uh, can I just do a quick uh, healing light? Yeah, if you want, sure. Yeah, I'll just do healing light on a radio. Let me just look up exactly. <sighs> Unless we want to take a quick nap down here, which I don't <laughs> think we do. No, it's quite sticky. I've still got two here. healing lights left, so you have... Okay, so let me just roll for that. Four, heal four. Heal four, man. Is that not That's enough? That's lovely, for you? but also not nearly helpful. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm. I, <laughs> uh, but Aradia, how, how much general. more do you think that you need? I mean, She's... me personally, I, I would prefer to have 20 more than i do she's wow. bloodied so, so that's a little greedy. trickier yeah, she's I bloodied my um uh -huh. she's below you know half what? health i will sacrifice myself and do not myself my spell slots <laughs> and do a level three cure wounds on you thank you um now dm sir yeah uh is this something that she rolls or that i roll you roll if you're okay. healing you roll it Okay, then I roll 3d8 plus my spell casting, which is oh, bless you. whatever, three. Uh, 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 here we go. Um, five plus seven, that's 12 plus three, 15. Great, thank you. You're welcome. So you what are you up to 75 now? 75 gold. Um, I don't know that I'm allowed to say uh, what I'm, okay. to, I mean, but I'm But I'm yeah. more than half. Okay, so I mean, I could do one more d6 on you if you want 
I feel okay with where we are right now. If we have to go into another battle, I'll probably need some healing in the battle, but um, yeah. I feel last... safe to just walk around. Could Where's we Sarah do, just to that? be safe, could we do a, a short rest here? Just like an hour take a nap in the goop? An hour rest. Um, you can you can certainly try. Uh, there will always be a chance that something wanders in or find you guys and interrupts it. But would you guys like to just continue on? Just because if we get yeah. in a battle, I don't have very many spell slots left. Um, so I'd like to continue on, but uh, so Nihilus, don't Karate. forget you can turn your sorcery points into yeah into spell slots. Okay, just just wanted to remind you. So Prati is telepathically talking to Nihilus and everyone and and uh, Aradia, and he just says like, "Hey, it seems like we just vanquished something that was a problem for the whole city. Should we tell, like, let's go tell the mayor or whoever is in charge and like just." Like, let's just go tell people that there's still one. Like, this is proof that there's hags here, and there's still one other hag out there. You know, it seems like something we should tell people. Can I look Some... around? I agree, but could I look around and see if there are any identifiable body parts? Uh, in the room, there is the 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 body of the two hags, uh -huh. disgusting and hideous as they are. And then there are, um, there's like a little bit of, pardon me? Can I see a head or a face or anything like that? On the hags? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They're I'd still... like to take a head or something. Okay. So you can go ahead and make a, you want to cut off both heads? No, just one. Just the one that looks like it would have been Auntie Nani. Okay. Uh, you can do make a nature check. Nature. I've never used that before. That's a plus zero. Ooh. Weirdly, I think I'm proficient in nature. I got a natural one. <laughs> <laughs> I cut off a finger. A radio. You see Nihilus go over there and pull out a small dagger, and he starts like <laughs> sawing at the shoulders. <laughs> like he starts sawing right here. Mm -hmm. And so. Uh, you want to let him... <laughs> but it's... with a butter knife. It's not no, a dagger. No. Aradia <laughs> comes over and goes, um, stop, stop, stop. Let me try. It's okay. <laughs> um, and then she rolls a... Oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> she rolls a two, and even with proficiency, it's only five. <laughs> wow. So, so, <laughs> so... Because it makes me laugh, I'll say you go, no, Nihilus... Uh, you silly, you silly Triton. You gotta use a sharp knife, and you start cutting at the shoulder, too. <laughs> um, the, the Prati just goes like, whoa. <laughs> Hottie, try. Hottie will uh, go, what in the hell are you doing? Oh yeah, we God. should have had Hottie do it. He's the one that's got all the barbarian strength. Yeah, Hadi will come over there and just like use his axe. Uh, oh my god, Sarah's also going to attempt. <laughs> well, Hadi Hadi <laughs> chops the head off and it's done. Oh, he did it. Yeah. Okay. Hadi has done it. Hadi did it. <laughs> Thanks, you hot piece of cow meat. And um, I take the head. <laughs> and uh, okay, so as you're over there, you see the hallway, and um, there's a a dead humanoid-looking body about 40 feet down the hallway. That I secret... ignore it. Okay. <laughs> uh... <laughs> All right, so... I don't want to ignore it. <laughs> We're ignoring it? What if it's alive, secretly? Well, I'm going to keep walking. You can stay and investigate. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm... <laughs> I'm so afraid. <laughs> the I feel like the... <laughs> <laughs> Catherine, both Catherine and Aradia has been severely <laughs> traumatized by that fucking bunny stump. So now I'm like, oh god. Um, listen, Aradia is gonna go over and check the body out with Hottie. <laughs> okay, so you guys. Uh, by the way, this is the only passageway that you currently see in this room. Okay. Uh, the one you came in 
uh, as I mentioned, slammed down during the fight. And um, as you go into the hallway, you see it g keeps going straight, and then there's like uh, a little side alcove to the right and a side alcove to the left about halfway down the hallway. Uh, and close to that junction is that humanoid body, and it's you come up upon it, and it looks... It's a half-elf, um, young half-elf, and it's dead, but the weird thing is, I'm not going to make you, your perception's pretty high, uh, it's chest, and this is pretty obvious, you look, you see its clothes are kind of ripped in its chest, around its chest, and you look closer and you see there's, its ribs are kind of broken outwards. Um, like something... Like a xenomorph, yeah. Like a xenomorph. <laughs> like something <laughs> popped out of it. And, uh, that's the only... If you would like to investigate further, you can, but... Um, that's what you see. And Hottie's like, oh my. Ugh, this is disgusting. I forgot how disgusting adventuring can be. Ooh. Um, Aradia takes her hands and... Uh, closes the little half elf's eyes. Ooh. Yeah. And um, Sarah collects some half elf blood in a vial. Okay. Yeah, that feels accurate. <laughs> <laughs> you never know when you'll need some half elf blood. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, you guys are in the hallway, Sarah. Uh, Aradia and Hati. Um, Nihilus, you're back in the room in which you fought. And Prodi. No, I was walking. I was just going to walk past the body. Oh, I see. I see. I didn't understand uh, what you meant. Uh, so you're in there. Prodi, are you following along? You mean up the uh, secret passage? Yeah. Yes. And do you guys want to keep going straight or the, explore the alcoves? I'll explore one alcove. One. Which, which <laughs> one? Um, whichever is closest to us. We're in it's the like middle the of end, it. Like, if we can see the end from where we are, I want to... Yeah, the, the right alcove um, kind of goes in and turns left. You can already tell it's a pretty small room. Uh, when you go... I'll explore that one. Yeah, when you go in there, you see more uh, bodies of young humanoids um and then make a perception check okay that is 15. okay out of the corner of your eye you just glimpse what looks like maybe it's a snake or a tadpole Ooh. of something that uh was squeezing between bodies and then disappeared under a crack in the stone wall. Ah! And, uh, it was. It's, it's a xenomorph. It was. <laughs> it's a xenomorph. It was blue. Uh, Aradia, Aradia comes running out of the alcove and she's like, "Guys, we have to run. We have to run. There's a weird thing in here that could get us at any moment." How, how big was it? It was. I don't know. Like a foot. Like... It was like a foot. <laughs> it didn't seem very big. Nihilus laughs, for sure. A radio really starts sprinting down the hall. She's deeply <laughs> afraid. So you're sprinting uh, north? Uh, yes, towards the exit. Towards um, towards the uh, away from uh, direction where we came that in, we were right? going. Okay. Yes, exactly. The direction we had previously been so going. So radio takes off, and uh, as she keeps going... Uh, you guys can choose. To, I, Hottie will will follow her. Oh, oh, oh Aradia, uh, uh, this <laughs> is ill advised, and uh, follows Aradia. And Aradia, you enter uh, another similar room to the one you just left. It's a. It looks like another dungeon uh, experimental area, except there's <laughs> there's there's um there's a. Uh, like tables, uh, s surgical tables, I guess you would call them, or or morgue tables where they put bodies. Yes, um, I know what you're talking about. I've seen Haunting of Hill House. And, and they're they're like 
lined up and there's uh, kids' bodies and there's non older there's older people's bodies and um, some of them are some of them have the the uh, exploded chest um, some of them don't uh, you don't see anything your perception what's your passive perception again I had this written down my passive perception is is pretty decent yeah. it's 16 yeah um, you don't see anything like you did when you came into the other place. You don't see hags or anything like that. Um, but this room is, the walls are decorated with, um, just tapestries only. And the tapestries are of landscapes that are desolate and windswept and, uh, they look, they look like, um, what's the, uh, canyon? Never mind. I'm not even going to try. Uh, it's well, just, just for the record, a radio walks into, yeah. a radio walks into this room and starts shaking her head furiously and goes, oh no, oh no, oh no. And she tries to like run back, but she runs into hottie instead. Oh. And so she's like, oh, I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Radio, I'm oh going to be gosh. sick. Why do I keep following you? <laughs> This is horrible. So she screams out to Nyla, Sarah, and Prati. Guys! Guys! They're everywhere. Something fucked up happened here. Something very, very... Like, we joke about hags. We're like, oh, hags are creepy. This is truly <laughs> terrifying. This is body modification horror shit happening in here. Prati, Prati's like... <laughs> he runs into that uh, morgue type of room, and he's just like... She's like, oh, it's, what? What's going on? What's, what, what, oh, oh man, there's so many exploding chest things. Like, what's, what's happening here? You'd say there's probably like twelve uh, bodies in there, and then Jeez. Prody make a perception check. Got. Uh, let's see. Uh, 19. Yeah. Uh, in the corner you see a modified bird cage with a white little bunny rabbit on top of it, on top of a side table. We don't go near bunnies. <laughs> the bunny, is the bunny alive? Yeah, it's hopping around. It looks happy and maybe a little, like, cold or something. It's shivering. Prati oh. goes over, goes over, and just like no, take... no. <laughs> he, starts to, he starts to stroke it and try to calm it down. So you reach into the cage and try to pet no. it. A radio? Are you doing anything, or are you just watching yes, this in horror? A radio is like violently screaming at Prati to stop. No, you fucking touch that bunny! Don't touch that bunny! Yeah, <laughs> that yeah, bunny I, yeah, news. I definitely, I definitely try to console the the bunny. No. <laughs> It's a scared <laughs> animal. So, not every not every monster is like a bunny. <laughs> so, Prody walks over to it while the radio is screaming, "No! What are you doing?" And and uh, Prody reaches in and as he's reaching for the bunny, he takes it in his arms and it cuddles up to him and he starts petting it and he turns around. Nothing's. It's just. Are, a, it looks like it's just a bunny. Are there radio any? Are the radio any... screams up to the sky. <laughs> oh, now the bunny's nice. Now the bunny's nice. Are there Does any... I have anything good? Are there any berries or anything around that I could feed the bunny to make it look like it's e eating human flesh? You guys are idiots. To make You're it idiots. look like it's eating... I, I'd like to freak out a radio some more. Oh, okay. Uh, make a... Yeah, make a perception check as well. Oh, that's only eight. Yeah, there's just like there's not much look that would um, be <laughs> analogous to to, <laughs> to to a body, but there's like wilted uh, kale next Ew. next next to the um, to the uh, cage. Uh, yeah, and so you're in this room. Well, no wonder it was freaked out. Yeah, and I also hate kale. <laughs> 
And oh, uh, you guys can relate. <laughs> yeah. What would you like to do? What? Yeah. So this is a room we walked into at the end of the hall we were running down. Yeah, north. And there is no like exit from this room other than where we entered. Uh, correct. You still had that left alcove that you didn't check. Um, halfway down the hallway. Okay, well then I guess we should go back to that, because I think we're trying to get back into the house, right? Because we can't really exit from which we came. Yeah, we, right. like, fell As through. far as you, yeah. Yeah. Um, so you go back down, yeah, go ahead, Aradia. Aradia stays <clears throat> back, like, five feet away from the bunny at all times. So whoever <laughs> is holding the bunny, Prati's holding the bunny, she's, like, walking away from it, like, keeps Hottie in between her and the bunny constantly. You don't wanna you don't wanna see the bunny? No, for, stop huh? it! So oh, it's gross! Don't <laughs> put it in my face! So for any new viewers, uh episode three, <laughs> I believe, three or two or three, uh Aradia had an encounter with a Stump bunny. <laughs> sure, stump bunny. Um a wolf in sheep's clothing is the monster that I threw at them and maybe Gave a radio PTSD. Uh, <laughs> so you guys make your way back down the hallway and you explore now the right alcove since you're going south. And as you enter, you see it's a similarly small room to the to the other one you explored, but this one has a spiral staircase going up. And uh, I assume you guys want to go up it? Yes. Yep. Okay. Fine. Uh, you, who's, what's the marching order? I can be in front, <laughs> since the radio's sad and it's scared yeah, in the back. I'll be second. You still have the bunny? Are you going to take the bunny, uh, Prati? Yeah. Okay. So you're um, carrying... Hottie is in between Prati and Radia, <laughs> and then Sarah's in the back. Okay. Uh, so you guys climb the stairs, and you get to the top, and it's a... Uh, an illusory painting you walk through and you enter an office um, similar to the one that you s looked into Auntie Nani's office in the uh, Sugar Plum House Orphanage. Uh, so it's reasonable to think that this is... We can walk through it? Yeah, you can. Uh, it's, it's essentially... Um, the same situation that was going on um, in the Sugar Plum House. This is now the Northern Orphanage, which you know to be the Little Petals home. <coughs> and uh, so now you're in this office. Nobody's in the office. It's closed. Should we let Siren go around? Um, so, uh, a radio specifically takes Siren and holds it up to the bunny to see if Siren has a reaction <laughs> to the bunny. She just, Siren just kind of sniffs and go, and doesn't know what to do. Her her fur kind of poofs up a little bit, but oh. doesn't know what to do. And it's just kind of like, what is this thing? Um, but doesn't, you know, uh, try to... Bite her eyes out. Bite the bunny's eye out, sure. eyes out. Okay. Uh, so Aradia puts it down and let Siren go explore. Siren runs around and doesn't find much to uh, much of anything, like no hag's eyes or anything like that. Okay. Um, I would like to just like exit and go to the Sugar Plum House and um, find my sister. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Because I'm just—I already know how this is gonna go, and I feel bad for your sister. No, uh, you don't know anything. <laughs> uh, so, so you just exit. Does anybody else want to do anything, or just exit with with Nihilus? Yeah, we just we go with him. Okay. Uh, so you guys leave the office, and as you're leaving the office, uh, a kid is just kind of uh, pushing a ball back and forth with another orphan kid and they look at you and they're like uh they see how like you guys have clothes a little bit torn um probably blood uh dried blood on your faces and they're kind of like uh, hi hi 
and you exit and you go back down uh, outside to the Sugar Plum House, you enter and uh, we'll, we'll fast forward this. We'll say you go up to where you found your sister the last time and she is there uh, fixing a kid's uh, button-down shirt that he had buttoned completely uh, misaligned. Uh, okay. I grab the head and I toss it at her. Oh, my God. And I say, this is what you defended. <laughs> and she screams, and so does so does the, uh, the uh, kids in the room as they see this hideous-looking thing. And uh, she looks at you and... Is like what happened, Nihilus? Auntie what? Nani's not a hag, huh? Auntie Nani's not a hag. No, she's not a hag. She's fine. She's perfectly nice. Is she Annalyn? Is she? That's what she looks like. That's her. I killed her. Uh, I don't even. Can't... I expect my apology. And she starts uh, ushering the children out of the room. One of them starts to like poke at the head, and she pushes the kid out of the room. And uh, she goes, Nihilus, what? What is that? That's disgusting. I can hardly look at it. It's Auntie Nani. And she's she's kind of just speechless. I mean, you threw a head at her, <laughs> and it's not only a head, but it's a hag head. And mm -hmm. um, she's just rubbing her face and mm -hmm. um, just doesn't know what to say to you is like well what am i gonna do now i don't and here's what you, here's what you do annalyn you can take over this orphanage how about that but i want to like children these little grubby little dirty things i want to <laughs> learn magic i thought you were gonna but, get me into a college oh hottie my my big friend here uh is gonna help out with that uh yes uh but you know, is there a deal's a deal, hottie? Listen, uh, Nihilus, I can get you possibly into the wandering college of Anista, but maybe your sister prefers a different school. And now that you have rid the Gidward of two hags, maybe the city, someone in the city could may have connections that could get her into an even a, a school somewhere else or uh and Prati goes thank you that's what i'm saying <laughs> and um <laughs> and uh, hottie goes uh i'm sorry miss uh my name is hottie i'm an associate of your uh brothers uh is is there any particular school you you had your eyes on uh, of wizardry, and and uh, Annalyn goes. Well, you know, there's Eklanara, which I had always heard about the the elf school, but uh, they're pretty. Uh, and Hadi interrupts her and goes, "Hadi, yeah, they're they don't allow any, they don't allow any non." elves into that school and she goes uh well what about islingstead institute in uh vera mall and hottie goes yep i have no connections there so uh okay well then this is getting us nowhere so uh just think about what you did annalyn and we'll be back why are you so mean to me brother <laughs> Nothing. He just saved you from getting eaten. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I did this he, for you. He, he is verbally abusive to you. So. <laughs> <laughs> but look at my actions. Look, look, look at the head, Adeline. Do you want to take that out of here, please? Mm. We should probably I mean, bring it with us for for verification purposes to whoever else we're talking to. Oh, yeah, I guess you're right. Okay, well, we'll be back. And so you take the head, and as you're exiting the Sugar Plum House, you notice the kids who had previously, as I described previously, they were essentially bullying each other constantly, physically and verbally, and 
they're playing nicer, like the one you saw at the Little Petals home. Uh, they were just rolling the ball nicely back and forth, and uh, as you're exiting the Sugar Plum House, um, you just, just a noticeable change in the demeanor of the children, of the orphans, and you exit, and where would you like to go? Um, you can find a... Uh, regulator station or you can um, ask Max where you might present <laughs> a hag's head uh, what would you like to do uh, I think we should ask Max right where that might be helpful and then we can go to sleep I don't want to sleep with the hag's head <laughs> anyone else we're good I guess that's fair. <laughs> yeah, it seems like business for the day is concluded. Okay. Uh, so you um, exit, and uh, Prati has a white bunny. No. And, and he's petting it nicely, and it's enjoying Prati. Prati, <laughs> Prati, why don't you think of a name for that bunny? No, don't name the bunny. <laughs> <laughs> and nice. and uh, I'll get back to you on that. You make your way back to uh, the Arbor Green, where Venture Ventures Adventuring Agency is, and you enter. Haughty enters uh, first, and he uh, addresses Martha. Martha, is uh, Max available? And Martha goes, oh, yes, Haughty. Uh, how are you? You... Don't look as bad as the others. Usually you come in in these types of situations much it's rougher. Cause he did, it's because he did nothing. Oh, he did nothing? <laughs> and Hottie goes, well, I'm kind of useless without a magic weapon. And I've been telling, <laughs> I've been telling Max to that it should be expensed and uh, <laughs> this organization should pay for it. And he just, and Martha goes, I'm going to go see if he's in a, he's in a tizzy. He is in Classic a tizzy, Max. and um, uh, Martha goes back uh, to his office, as you've seen her do many times, and uh, knocks on the door and enters, and Max goes, Martha, I told you not to, to bother me. I'm, I'm brainstorming here. I'm trying to access any creativity I have left. Oh, I'm freaking out here, Martha. What's, how, what, can I, what can I help you with? And oh, is that what we're calling it now? Brainstorming when you're in a lone a room alone by yourself. Well, he is just ahead, <laughs> <laughs> so it's fair that that's what he would call it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I didn't even I didn't even mean for that to sound in any way sexual or like. Uh, I mean, it didn't, but I had already decided that it was sure, going to be sure, so. sure, sure. Uh, and uh, Martha goes, well, Max, the big bed fellows are here and Hottie's back and uh, he's uh, still alive. And so are the big bed fellows. And she's oh, I can take a break. Maybe it'll help. And he floats out the, f the, the head, the Browvian Max morning brow floats out half floating, levitating, half flying with his eyebrow wings, glorious mustache, uh, Greets you guys and goes, uh, Hotty, uh, man, how did how did they do? Everything good? What? And uh, Hotty goes, yes, Max. Uh, not only did they uh, perform quite admirably, but uh, I was quite useless because you refused to expense a magic weapon for me. Uh, but. They were quite useful, and I think they will make a grand addition to the Venture Ventures Adventuring Agency team. And uh, not they, they were great, and I got the itch scratched of adventuring. So, uh, everything's good, Max. And Max says, okay, Hottie. Uh, Wait, you're, you're done with us, Hottie? And Max, before Hottie answers, goes, oh, uh... This was just like a little trial thing, uh, Hottie. You, Hottie's a member. He's a former. He he was one of the first. We started this thing together, and so uh, this was a lie, is what you're saying. This <laughs> whole thing was a lie. I'm being lied to constantly by everyone that I think I can trust, including what the an bunny. Time. 
Um, the bunny is lying. The bu- this bunny is lying. You don't know. The bunny doesn't lie. <laughs> um, but uh, Max goes, yeah, it's standard procedure. We just wanted, I wanted to make sure, you know, you guys could hold your own and wow. uh, nothing is untoward. Uh, no hard feelings, of course, right? Uh you know, I, I love you guys. Uh, I think we all just stare at Max. Mm-hmm. It really Definitely wasn't a right. big deal. This is like... A, <laughs> I'm... I don't know. Anyways, are you guys uh, b- busy? I'm trying to plan I a holiday. Pa- I'm trying to create a holiday. <laughs> oh, my God. Head. Oh, no. You threw a head out of head. <laughs> Not only is that offensive, but it's disgusting, Nihilus. Uh, Martha goes, oh my. Uh, and, uh, Max goes, what am I supposed to do with that? Uh, and Max has, uh, uses one of his mage hands to start cleaning up the head juice that rolled on the floor. Um, and, uh... Uh, Nihilus, uh, do you any... That happens after brainstorming. <laughs> <laughs> We're perverts. Uh, Nihilus, is there any context? Dave is just quietly saying, refusing to look at us. <laughs> Nothing to add. <laughs> it's just quiet between you guys like Hottie, Hottie finally speaks up and goes okay uh, Nihilus is a very interesting character he Aww. is uh, temperamental to say the least I'm sure you know this Max but uh, since he won't provide context we found out that there's two hags running a couple orphanages in the Gid Ward. What? Didn't we already do this? Uh, when we first came back to talk to Max, did we like explain this whole thing to He's him? providing... Max doesn't know what a... Like... It, there's no hags, like name tag on the on the head. So it's just a disgusting looking head. So he doesn't... Oh, I thought he... I thought we told him that's what we were out to do. <laughs> so, like, sure, but it's... You knew. Okay. Um, so he explains that this is a hag head. And uh, Max goes, okay, so... Uh, see, it's got this uh, certificate of authenticity. Oh, I didn't see that. On the back of the head, it had this this certificate of authenticity. Uh, you know, the regulators would be quite happy to see you've rid uh, the Gid Ward of, of this menace. Um, um, well, do you... Did you want me to keep the hag head, or did you want me to just uh, contact the uh, regulator uh, overseer, and what would you, guys? Well, we want to we wanna rest, so maybe we can store the head here while we sleep, because Aradia apparently has an issue with sleeping with a dismembered head. Uh, Logical. We should leave the bunny here, too. <laughs> and, and well, no, the bunny should probably snuggle in the bed with us. And uh, yeah, so the bunny will not snuggle in the bed <laughs> with us. Well, the we'll keep it can... separated away from you, Radia. Don't worry. Radia's gonna sleep with Siren on her face. <laughs> <laughs> um, Max says, "Yeah, I can call uh, overseer in charge of that ward and um." There is still one left, too. Undead. I mean, unkilled. Oh, my. Uh, mm-hmm. But you didn't see it down there, correct? No. Yeah. Uh, well, just tell all that to the overseer. And, uh, yeah, that should be... That should be enough. Uh, and so do you guys just want to go rest and come back in the morning and I'll have... Yeah. Okay. Yes. All right. So can we uh, can we recap what uh, what currency we got? We got a bunch of platinum and. Oh yes, hold on. Wait, I have it. Okay. It is. Oh, that's just my currency. We got sixty, 60 platinum, platinum one hundred and eighteen wow. gold, 
94 silver, and a spider token, and a wand. Oh, so it's split between the four of us, so we're dividing all that by four? Yeah, yeah sure. Okay. We also got small humanoid bones and berries, scones, and cookies. <laughs> you guys can have the, uh, you know, toddler bones. <laughs> Delicious. <laughs> No, I think we give that to Sarah, right? She's the one that wants yeah, them. Yeah, probably. I'll take them. Okay. Okay, so that means that each of us get uh, 15 platinum. Here, I'll do the math while we rest. I'm I'll doing it. Um, so we got 15 platinum, 29.5 gold, and 23.5 silver each. Okay, well, you can't break up a silver or a gold, so unless we so, want to yeah, get, change, get changed with silver. So... Well, we can, right? Because it's... Yeah. Yeah. I'm just saying, like... <laughs> 20, what did you say? 29.5? Gold, yeah. Don't worry about, like, going to break it up. Just put, like, 29 gold, uh, 5 silver in your D&D &D Beyond. Yeah. We'll just, uh, how, yeah. how many silver did we each get per person? 23.5. And then do 5 copper. So okay, 28 dude. silver and 5 copper, okay. Um, who's holding the spider token? The law... law I think Menare? Sarah is. How do you say it? Low Menre. Low Menre, yeah. L-O-L-M-E-N-R-A-E. Love it. With a signia. Okay, great. I think Sarah's got that. Great. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, let's go take a, take a long rest. Should it be a long one? This should be a long one. Okay, so you guys head back down uh, to where you've been staying and uh, <clears throat> grab some food and you retire for the night. Uh, Proddy, what do you do with the bunny? Just just sleeps with me in the bed. Okay. Oh my god, this bunny's probably the other hag. How are you guys feeling? You guys want to talk about anything in the little pillow talk or are you guys good? Yeah, um, Aradia turns to Nihilus and says, How did that feel, getting that one over on your sister? It felt normal. Like the way your life <laughs> normally goes. Uh-huh. I mean, that's kind of our dynamic. Mm -hmm. she, she, she acts out because she's jealous of me, and then so she, she tries to, to, to be the, the better of, of the two, you know? Um, she tries to be better than me as far as like being good. While but... Radia and and Nihil is talking, uh, Prati is just he's got the he's got the uh, bunny tucked into a little corner of the bed, and he just goes around the bed like making sure the sheets are like exactly like tucked into the into the mattress. And just, like, <laughs> it's, like, it's just like straightening, and he's just like. <sighs> you've never uh, seen you've kind of, never seen Prodi kind of be muttering, like this. He's just kind of like muttering to himself and he's just like <laughs> talking, talking. It's like patting the, <laughs> patting the pillows like perfectly flat. My god. He's like resting. Like, are rest you of. okay? What's happening? <laughs> he's like these sheets are just all out of whack and it's like it's like there's no Turn down service here, Adventure Ventures. Like, what? What are they? What are they doing? You have one <laughs> job to do, and they don't put the pillows like next to each other so they're nice and uniform. And the There's... sheets are just all in disarray. And they, everyone knows you, you put a sheet down and you <laughs> give it a nice once over, wow. and you flatten it out. And like, what? Oh, what is this? I don't know. Is this your breaking point, Prodi? Breaking point? No, what are you talking about? <laughs> no, I'm Brody, fine. is there something happening emotionally that we should unpack for you? I just feel like, I don't know, maybe to, maybe it was just like today was really stressful. I don't know. I don't know. Just we like, all, I feel like were, really agitated. Sarah and I almost died. Prati gets out his uh, perpetual gin flask and just... Yeah, I just don't know. I just feel like really stressed <laughs> these last couple days, and I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I just like Nihilus like starts petting Prodi's head. <laughs> feels it's okay. Good. Thanks, Nihilus. It's okay, go to and sleep. Prodi just like. <laughs> and uh, 
right next to the bunny. Ganon <laughs> is in the room with you as well. <laughs> Who? What? Ganon's still with you us? guys didn't say anything to him. <laughs> Who's Ganon? <laughs> the kid. The kid. But he didn't come with but us. But he didn't down even come there. inside with us. He was waiting I mean, outside for you guys. No, we went to the say- sugar plum. He was waiting outside. <laughs> you went sugar plum and you came back down to talk to your. He was okay. waiting outside. <clears throat> All right, N- Nihilus <laughs> gets up from the bed and starts like pushing him out. Ganon, you need to go home. Goodbye. And he like shuts the okay. door. Okay. Well, you guys. Uh... You guys no, look so done. cool. You're on the other oh, side of the that? door. Bye. Uh, uh, it's just like, <laughs> okay, bye. And that's that's that for the night. And you guys will have a restful, long rest. Yay. And Do I get my HP back? Yeah, Aradi is sleeping on the rest. other side of the bed from the bunny. And but I mean, my temp, my temp HP is no longer what it was? Correct. Okay. And uh, when you wake up in the morning, Aradia... Uh, Siren and uh, the bunny, which needs a name, are kind of cuddling together cutely. Is it's the cutest thing you've ever seen. But name's, the bunny is Roger. still on the other side of the bed, right? No, they kind of like met in the middle at the t- at the head of the bed and are kind of for warmth. Aradia jumps out of the bed and just looks at Siren and goes, "You traitor!" <laughs> <laughs> and Siren, Siren kind of looks up like, just goes to bed. Just ignores you. Um, and so you guys uh, have a little breakfast, I assume. Karate goes, yeah, I named I named the bunny Roger. Oh, no. <laughs> he, just, he just looked like a Roger to me. And... Mm. Do you even know if uh... it's a girl bunny or a boy bunny? Did you notice this little rabbit balls? Is that what's happened to you? It Why are you matter. genderizing it, this bunny? It doesn't Aradia. matter to me. It's I a just, boy name. I wow. Just, <laughs> if it's a girl, if it's a girl. I think Roger is is good. You know. Yeah. Wow. It could go Aradia. either way. Didn't know Fine. I've been anymore. out. I've been out woke in this group. <laughs> 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 that was a good woke battle. Uh, <laughs> I, sus- I I concede. I acknowledge my failings. Let's move on. Um, so you head back to Venture Ventures because you were at the Burying Maiden uh, in between Pate Point and Fortune's Favor, if you recall. Uh, uh, Prodi got confused in his uh, excited and uh, stressed out state. So you head back to Venture Ventures in the Arbor Green and... Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I just need to take a moment. Aradia makes everyone stop. I just need to take a moment and acknowledge we defeated the hag that we spent out of gameplay <laughs> um, months waiting to attack. I just need us to have a moment of more celebration for that because that's amazing. Yay. We did it. We Yay. did it. Yeah, yeah, we yeah, did yeah. It. We did yeah. It. yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh uh uh. Uh, uh, uh. uh Nihilus takes for the... 15 minutes. <laughs> Nihilus takes Prodi's flask, open it and pours it down Aradia's mouth. <laughs> <laughs> brunch, 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 brunch. <laughs> yeah, you guys Hopefully, you've gained confidence in yourself. Um, but not a level. We've gained confidence. In <laughs> you, it's I'm, fine. I'm just giving you a hard time. I don't. I mean, it's usually good to give your DM a good a hard time when speaking about levels. Um, so you make your your way back to Venture Ventures, and Max is is. Oh, he seems to be almost constantly working. Uh, he's in there and he's talking. Brainstorming talk- again. We Jesus come in Christ. and we're just like <laughs> still in that, that brunch celebration. We're just like, brunch, brunch, brunch. Hag killer, hag killer. Brunch, and, brunch, 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 brunch. Uh, Hottie is back there. He didn't go back to the uh, tavern with you guys, uh, but he meets you. He's back at Venture Ventures, and it's Max, Hottie, and this dragonborn uh, gentleman, blue uh, dragonborn, uh, with with 
essentially police dress uniform for the regulators of Inista. And when you come in uh, and you're celebrating, Max goes, oh, yeah, this is the... This is who I was telling you about. Uh, this is... <laughs> they're... they're happy that they were able to rid the city of this menace, of course. That's why they're celebrating. Uh, big bedfellows, I'd like to introduce you to uh, Innis's high regulator, Uzha Octo. What? <laughs> U-Z-H- Strange. Strange name. U-Z-H-A, first name, last name, O-K-T-O. And he goes, oh, please just call me uh, high regulator or or uh, high regulator octo. Um, you don't. We're gonna call you Uza. Okay. Uh, anyways, I have a busy day, Max. Uh, you said they had a uh, evidence of the hags in the Gid Ward, and um, Haughty at this point goes, "Yes, I believe Nihilus." Usually by this time he's thrown it on the floor, so I don't know. I don't have it. I left it here. What did oh, you do? Oh right. Uh, <laughs> that was your DM's <laughs> fault. Uh, <laughs> How did we lose the, the <laughs> hag's head? <laughs> um, uh, so Hottie brings it out, and um, High Regulator Octo looks at it and goes. Yes, I will have our investigators look at this, but, um, but uh, I know a little bit about hags, and this is just con very consistent with disgusting natural form of hags. Uh, I would like to thank you guys on behalf of Anista and An Innis particularly, those orphans, you know, who knows what would have happened, uh, with those kids, and, uh... Yeah, there's still one left. Oh. And you didn't find him there, did you? No, we didn't look. No, but I believe it is this bunny. She's kidding. Oh. She's just... It's not. Okay. Uh, it's just a funny joke. But... I'm not kidding. <laughs> So it was in like a dungeon area beneath the orphanages or something that mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yep. And you were in the dungeon beneath Sugar Plum House and then you went to the dungeon beneath Little Petals Home. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. And what did you find in the dungeon beneath Little Petals Home? Just a lot of open little, bodies. Little bodies with their chest cavities exploded outwards. And a foot-long worm tadpole thing, snake. But uh, it hid under more bodies, and I decided to run away. Yeah, it went oh, through the and wall. wilted kale. Like, the whole thing was disgusting. Mm -hmm. Probably the most scary thing we found. Yes. <laughs> and, uh... High Regulator... His face kind of slackens when you mention the tadpole-looking thing and the bursting bodies and all that. And he goes, I don't think that's a hag, but, um... No, I didn't hag, say maybe. I think it was a hag. I don't, I, clearly this <laughs> thing and that thing are very different. Uh, okay. Well, that's not good. Um, but hopefully it will not return and we have, I will have, uh, Regulators stationed in the Gid Ward and around those three orphanages in particular. Have them look inside the orphanage. It definitely got into the wall. Well, the nature, if it, if it is what I think it is, the nature of what it is will not reveal itself. So, uh, what do you think it is? Possibly a slod. S L A A D. ¿Qué es eso? Slod. What is that? What is that? Is oh, what? thank you. Uh, please, <laughs> please refrain and speak. Uh, <laughs> no, don't you say it. Don't you dare. Um, Your DM's common language. <laughs> What's wrong with that? <laughs> What's wrong with that? Um, I was just. I thought I get triggered when people say speak English. <laughs> <laughs> Spanish person. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm not a commoner. 
so Slot is he he says it's essentially um, uh, creatures of chaos and sometimes they invade the material plane from uh, pandemonium or limbo I believe it is actually uh, and uh, look to infect people and humanoids of all kinds and they can be very dangerous uh but uh, is it sort of like an intestinal parasite or is it more that they like in like a like an alien that then controls your body you know i'm not really sure i've just heard of this in stories and mm. secondhand knowledge but um it's not good either way, but thank you for doing this, and I will actually um, let the Ever Watchers know of your uh, deeds, and I'm sure they will want to talk to you, which is a huge honor. And you guys know that the Ever Watchers are the the two rulers of Innis and Anista, and um, you saw them in the future in their dragon form, but nobody, before you went into the future, everyone assumed that they were just humanoids and nobody really knew that they were dragons. Mm -hmm. So, Is that Suha and Zahur? Yes, correct. And um, so, back, you, you guys thought they were humanoids too before you time traveled and met them in their true form. Uh, but so, they're very isolated and never really leave their their um, areas of the city. Um, so High Regulator um, says, I'm sure they will send an emissary to bring you to bring you to the uh, to Fortune's Favor uh, area of the of the city and uh, meet you guys. So if there's nothing else, I better be get going and I will take this hag head if you do not mind. No, please, take it away from us. You should take the money, too. Is... I think that's a joke. I'm going to go. And... <laughs> High please follow up on the slot. There are children. Won't someone please think of the children? <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, so he leaves, and you're left with Max, who's like... <sighs> so that's pretty insane. I don't think I've had any... Uh, Adventuring parties meet either of the Ever Watchers, but uh, you know we're not your everyday adventuring party, Max. You made that clear from the first time I met you guys. That's for sure, in every way. Uh, <laughs> and we killed Hag. Uh -huh. we, we killed, killed Hag. Hey Hag killer. Hey Hag killer. Hag. 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 Excuse kill, me, uh, did hag, you kill a hag? Lose. Oh, excuse me, did you yeah. kill a hag? Oh my gosh, did I you did. kill a hag? I did! Oh my god, did you? Yeah, I oh killed a hag. Did. did you guys oh kill a hag? Oh my god, yeah. look at me. I, I, I killed a hag. hag. I killed a hag. Hags? <laughs> yes. We killed two hags. We killed... Hotty, what? you didn't kill a hag. You were That was Sarah. That was Sarah. That was Sarah. Sorry, Sarah. Oh, still yells at Hotty. Uh, I... Was there for the moral okay. support. <laughs> you killed a stove oven, and that is something to be celebrated to a certain extent. Speaking mm, of which, Max, very much extent. They, as you can see, they agree that it should be expensed, and I should get a magic weapon. So no the situation. Said that, so no, I, I mean, Nihilus say was saying it only, on the way. I will say that, but only if Hoddy stays with us. Then listen, I agree. listen, listen. This rich bitch over here wants to expense. <laughs> A magical weapon. It's not that our money. It's rich, not our money. That is just how the rich are. Nihilus, how do you think I got rich? Exactly. <laughs> By Expensive. preying on the poor. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so uh, Max goes, oh, hottie, we'll just, you have a job already. You're hardly ever here. I just needed you to come back and do a favor. Just please... We'll talk about it, Hadi. And Hadi goes, okay, okay. And uh, he starts to say his goodbyes to you guys. If you guys would like to say anything, you can. Bye. Uh-huh. Uh, Aradia takes Hadi's uh, face in her hands and brings it close to him and says, 
I find you repugnant. There's no <laughs> amount of attraction that I have for you. However, <laughs> your, <laughs> your wow, and I'm the, one. I'm the mean one. I'm the mean one. You are. Your insides. Your I don't insides call people repugnant. Sexy. Unfortunately, I care a lot about the my outer feelings towards someone. So I'm sorry that our love couldn't uh, couldn't happen, wow. but I hope that you do find love in this life. Aradia, that's pretty presumptuous of you. Hottie goes. Hottie goes. Uh, <laughs> Hottie goes. Uh, Aradia, I am. I, I'll just put it this way: I'm not really into. Uh, don't say it. Sexual relationships. <laughs> so. Oh. Oh. Uh, now I'm deeply attracted to you. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. That's my canon. The only thing I'm attracted to is money. Of so, course. <laughs> uh, no one is shocked. Oh, uh, I see. That's how you brainstorm. I get it. It's mm-hmm. a beautiful sentiment. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Hottie says his goodbyes and takes off, and he walks off into the sunset. The sun goes down into a sunset and then rises right back up as he's walked, okay. just to benefit the <laughs> the uh, <laughs> the visuals there. I love that. <laughs> and you kind of hear I know, a one inspiration dice to the DM. No, I'm just kidding. I'm give you those. <laughs> and um. So you're left there, and Martha was dancing with you guys when you were celebrating the uh, hag killing. Uh, Max was just floating there, obviously. Um, And uh, Max says to you guys, Okay, now that that is out of the way, big bedfellows, I, I I don't know if you noticed yesterday, I was freaking out, I'm still freaking out today. I've been trying to come up with a holiday that I can monetize uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> well, we're really glad to know you're not wasting your time. And and oh, so when you said brainstorming, you really meant you were brainstorming. Okay. Yes, Nihilus. Uh, yeah. Anyways, I'm trying to come up with a hol- holiday that I can monetize around this time of the year, which is when Venture Ventures was created, and I c- am just struggling. I I think I've just well, what do you what do you got so far? Balloons and um <laughs> uh you know people love fireworks and uh when I uh you know kids love when I have multiple hands uh, mage hands and I can do tricks with that I just don't know what I'm doing here, and I feel like I'm clearly I'm creatively empty. Is there any way you can help me with that in between visiting the Ever Watchers? So our next our next mission is to solve writer's block. Is that what you're <laughs> saying? You guys, I'm just so <laughs> desperate. There just, is. There is. is there like a is there some sort of need that you're that you're fulfilling for somebody? Yeah, are or? you just trying to make some money? What's the what's happening? It sounds like he wants money. I was gonna throw like a. I mean, you guys would benefit from it too. All the end of the year um, dividends come out, and since you're members of this agency, you get dividends. So, is your business in trouble? What is happening here? No, I'm Should just we trying find to. Another adventuring agency i'm just trying to expand our sources of revenue oh man i'm so desperate could, i knew i knew this was gonna we happen could, like when we get that hag's head back we could put it on display and mm. let people touch it for a gold piece or something can i tell you what people love chocolate and and a burning need to almost get something that they want, but it being slightly unobtainable. <laughs> Those are the two things that Life? people what love. You... Every every book I've ever read features prominently chocolate and <laughs> someone having to work to earn the right to have the thing that they want. So we need to just convince somebody that they need something and that they have to work just a little bit and pay just a little bit of money to get what they want. Isn't that basically what a candy store is? 
We should open a candy store. That's brilliant. Candy store. Candy, candy store. store. <laughs> candy <laughs> store. And, and his candy Max store. gets very excited. And he goes, oh, the unit next door is is not rented out. Maybe I could uh, see about getting a hold of that unit and opening a candy store. That's a brilliant idea. And he um, summons these two Big B's hands, which are huge blue hands. Whoa! Um, that you saw when he was uh, sacrificing himself. He used them to grab onto Krizeth Dael, the drow assassin. Um, and he mm-hmm. and they're huge. They're like five feet long. And oh. he grabs your face gently with these huge hands. But So just imagine like your head is just filling up like this part of the Big B's hands. Mine or all of us? Yours. And he goes, you're brilliant. You're brilliant, Aradia. <laughs> Thank you. And he... And he <laughs> Thank you. And he floats off back to his office and um, starts ranting about something. Uh, a radio whispers. Nihil- a radio whispers. I think Max wants to have sex with me. I don't oh know. Ni- Nihilus turns to Prati and says, I know you're the one who came up with the uh, the candy store idea. No, it's he, okay. Just let her he, have it. <laughs> <laughs> I just... I just wanted to point that out. <laughs> that I noticed. Also, can I just point out that I do acknowledge that Aradia is just slowly becoming Katie Maravich's character on College Humor, whom I love dearly. But it's constant. Like, she is always doing these videos that's like, uh, um, uh, stop flirting with me. And everybody's like, we're not flirting with you. <laughs> No, you are. Oh, you're so sexy. Calm down. I've acknowledged that that's slowly what Arady is morphing into, and it's fine with me. <laughs> um, yeah, so Martha is like, oh, this should be interesting. Um, I guess we're going to run. <laughs> I guess we're going to run a candy store now. Uh, if you Correction, guys. Correction, you're going to run the candy store. While well, we're oh, off adventuring. Man. Oh, no. Oh, no. Uh, Can I tell you, I was never an assistant, but I know someone that was. <laughs> <laughs> and I know that it is a very thankless job. So I just want to say, Martha, I'm looking at you in the eyes. I don't even want to bone you, and I know you don't want to bone me, and I appreciate you. That means a lot, of radio. And... <laughs> <laughs> you know, Max appreciates me. He tells me once a year, and... <laughs> <laughs> that's a lot and when when's the once a year it's he, it's usually random but um, um i think it, it's a it, it's coming up because it's been a while anyways oh, okay um he <laughs> he pays me very well and i know he appreci- appreciates me uh even though he only tells me once a year but thank you for saying that it's just sometimes he can get uh his stress can can overflow onto me and it's just anyways if you think of a name for a candy store i'm sure he won't be able to think of a name send us a message we're Uh, getting paid for this right no you well i don't know you'd have to talk call it sugar or us Mm. (laughs) what about just just gave us a whole rant on chocolate i can have chocolate part of the part of the name yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I Take like Take your this. time, Mark. No, no, no. Let's do this right now. <laughs> uh. <laughs> I really want to think about this. Chocolate. Choc- chocolate. Are you late? Chocolate. Something <laughs> in there. Something about being late for chocolate. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> How about just, like, chocolate ventures? Oh, that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> I was kind of hoping for a pun, you know? Oh, uh, yeah, you know... Google, Microsoft, no puns. Don't exist in this world. Yes. Uh, uh-huh. It melts in your mouth, not on your head. Uh, yeah, can you just call it uh, M&M's or Hershey's? Maybe that. I've never heard of that before. <laughs> I think that would be... <laughs> I think we should call them they she's. Excuse me. Wow. They she's. Great, great. And Nihilus um, takes the second round of the woke championship. <laughs> He's getting out to an early lead over <laughs> Um. Oh. So, uh, yeah. you guys are killers. You guys are brainstorming, and shortly thereafter, we'll say, 
uh, for for expediency, uh, a gray half drow enters in big robes, a lot of clothes, and he's very he's about five eight, super thin, um, and he introduces himself as Kofer, the scribe for the Ever Watchers. And um, he he uh, looks around and goes, "I'm sorry, sorry to bother you. I am here to escort the." And he looks down at his book that he's carrying, and he finds a uh, part of it, and he said, "The big bedfellows." Is you're in luck. That's us. That's us. Oh, okay. you did it. If if you don't mind, the ever watchers of Anista would like to speak with you and thank you personally for ridding the Gidward of two hags. Aradia nods and just like starts going towards him he's, quietly. He's not making eye contact with any of you. He's just kind of She's stupid. not making eye contact with him. Fun fact about Aradia, deeply uh, nervous around any other drow, even if they're half drow. Even if they're male? What do you mean? Well, in drow society, males are... It's a matriarchal society, and males are essentially used only yeah. for procreation. So they're... Yeah, Yeah, that would it. freak her out more. Okay. Yeah. Um, She's more freaked out. Okay. So you guys follow him back. I, I, I do hold his hand. But he will not let you hold his hand. Well, I'm gonna keep trying. <laughs> make a I can't believe you're gonna grapple him? Alright. Make a make an athletics check. Not grapple. Well, he's not gonna let you, so we have to roll for it. Twenty! Oh my god. <laughs> a nat twenty. Yeah, he didn't roll a nat twenty. Um, so you you guys see Nihilus approach <laughs> Kofer and uh, try to grab his hand and Kofer is kind of like, did he do that on accident? Pulls his hand away. Nihilus tries again. Pulls his hand away and tries to walk away from Nihilus. Nihilus walks faster and um, lightning quick speed you see Nihilus <laughs> Just grab his his <laughs> arm. He's not even like holding his hand. It's just like a claw grip around his hand, and Kofer's hand is probably just like this, just just crushed, and <laughs> and and Kofer's like, oh, "What are you doing? Uh, please don't do that. I I, I, I this is very uncomfortable for me. Please." Already Aradia just whispers in Nihilus's ear, "No means no." Oh. <laughs> Round three goes to Aradia of the Woke Championships. And and, and Nihilus just, like, pushes her. <laughs> <laughs> All right, bold move, brother. So, uh, Kofer takes you down. It's not too far. You go through Fortune's Favor, and on the edge of the uh, bay... Overlooking the bay is the castle of Innis. It's it's an old castle. It's it has the arcane fountains around it that are supplying it with the arcane liquid that you don't know what it is yet um, to hold it up. And it's a beautiful castle. And he escorts you into the castle. There's um, not very many guards as not as many guards as you think there'd be. Um, and it's logical to think, like, who's going to fuck with some... It, it would be logical to think that, since you know they're dragons, that they would think, like, who's going to actually try to fuck with us because we're dragons. Anyways, so you go into the castle, and there's two thrones. Um, one is of uh, made of just uh, gold and brass and copper... And it's very angular. Uh, angular, I'm, uh, I'm lacking the word, but just angular. And then the other one is more um, natural stone. The other throne is more natural stone um, jutting up. They're about the same height. And you see a um, gray-skinned dwarf sitting 
in the a dwarf woman sitting in the um, the metal throne and a uh, human gray skinned uh, male sitting in the stone throne and uh, Kofor leads you up and introduces you as the big bedfellows to what you presume are the ever watchers although it would have been funny if I would have thought about it earlier to be like Oh, sorry, we're just placeholders and walk off. Um, uh, and uh, this dwarf woman, she has, both of them have gray skin. And when you saw them in the future on the Isle of Inn, they are uh, platinum steel dragons. So it makes sense that they would assume some uh, part of their original form. Uh and she has a gray, steel gray beard, because dwarf women have beards as well. Um, and Rock on. Uh, he is clean shaven, um, clean shaven head. And um, oh. they stand up and uh, their voices in this large kind of meeting hall echo off the walls, uh, giving it a little more... Uh, power and they greet you and say uh, big bedfellows and they pause after saying that like I can't believe I just said that um, we understand you located and identified hags of the Gid Ward where that we're controlling orphanages um, we have summoned you here to thank you for your service to Innis and then uh, Inista as well, and, uh... Aradia is appropriately bowing. Okay. And, uh... Yeah, they, they kind of, um... They, they say, is there any... Any way we can, uh... Repay you? You will be given titles, uh, for your... For your Does deeds. that come with a salary? Uh, no, it does not. But if you would like to be, we can certainly find you a position in the government if that's if you'd like to retire Ooh, from no, adventuring. No, 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 no. no. I don't want to work for it. Uh, <laughs> but with your titles, uh, we can grant you. Um, a, it's very difficult to find, it's very expensive and difficult to find uh, establishments or um, a home base, as it were, to, to, to call your own, and we can certainly find you um, a, a home. A home. <laughs> that sounds great. <laughs> we humbly accept. Thank you. Okay. Uh, and we do accept diamond. We may have. Uh, Suha looks at her brother and and says, Zahur, uh, the Zekin Collective. Um, I don't like dealing with them, brother, and I know you don't either, uh, but I'm sure we have something, you know, in the back that, diamond-wise, that we can give them. Uh, and Zahur kind of, his face shrinks a little bit and goes, if you insist, sister, and Kofor steps up like he's expecting to be told to go grab something. And uh, Zahur says to Kofor, Kofor, no, 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 this is, uh, I will take care of this. You just stay here and um, you just stay here. And Zahur walks into the back and he's gone for a bit. And Suha, um, yeah. Question. D uh, <clears throat> I can't remember exactly... But is Zahur the one who went bad in the future, or was that someone else? Make an intelligence check. Oh, great. 
Um, it's a low DC. Where's my intelligence? Oh, it's a 17. Yeah, you're fine. Uh, yeah, Zahur was the one that you guys met Suha, and Zahur was... Um, Suha believed that her brother... She just didn't... She wasn't sure that he was somehow being controlled. It was just hard for her. The the, the feeling you got from from her was that she was having a hard time accepting that her brother would do what he did and just kind of what she felt betray the city. Uh, so yes, to answer your question, yes, uh, Zakur okay. was, uh, anyways, uh, and they go, well, in terms of the establishment, uh, as you know, this is a very old city and we can get you a place um, I'd rather not evict someone, but there are some places uh, in Ista or Innes, uh, depending on which side of the city you would like to be on, um, that you can fix up and call your own, uh, and we will delay any uh, costs for three months. Um, oh, we have to pay for this. No, you'll be given the title to the establishment, uh, but fixing it up, you will have to pay for, and any taxes and any... Um, you'll have to pay for fixing it up, but any taxes and any running costs that may occur will be covered for three months. Uh, okay, okay. And um, do you have any idea which side of the city you would like to be on do you mind telling us some benefits of each side well i am the, i'm the ever watcher of innis so i'm gonna tell you and while my brother is gone that innis is much better than ista but he would tell you that ista is uh full of hard-working uh gracious people who are much more down to earth, yada, 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 than the Anesian people. And, um, but to be quite honest with you, it is one city, so they're equally as old and they're equally as beautiful just in different ways. The southern city of Ista has more, and this is the DM talking, uh, the southern city would be more, um, I would say, like, some Moorish uh, stylings, uh, and Innis, what you've been seeing has been more... Western European, I guess. And we've spent more time in Ennis. Yes, in the northern city. Well, I feel like this is where all our friends live, you know? Maybe, <laughs> we, should... <laughs> Maybe we should just get our house here. <laughs> Make it easy to go back to Venture Ventures. Yeah, I don't care. Whatever. Home is wherever you guys are, so... Oh. Prodi says petting Aww. the bunny. And the bunny. Fuck that bunny. No. <laughs> um, she, she's joking. She doesn't mean it. She, I hate you. I hope someone joke. skins you alive. She's so wow. funny. She's so funny. She You're still the mean that. one, Nihilus. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I've never wished for anyone to be skinned alive. Just saying. <laughs> you just keep making a list, and then at some point, I'll arbitrarily <laughs> say you're no longer the mean one. Um <laughs> So Suha goes... It's all tied up. It's in the wilderness. Suha says to you guys that uh, you are a member, I was told, a member of Venture... A owner, I believe. It's a type of organization that shares ownership of Venture Ventures Venturing Agency. And uh, we will be uh, granting them 
a benefit as well, which will indirectly benefit you. So um, it sounds like you've decided that you would like an establishment on Innis. And if you'd mm -hmm. like to turn that into any sort of part of it or all of it, it's up to you guys what you do with the renovations. But if you want to turn it into a, a partially a business, you can do that. And the uh, licensing fees there will Sarah be waived. definitely raises her hand. I would like to do that. Uh, yeah. Um, Catherine, on a personal note, would like for us to never talk about, like, interest fees in D&D &D again. <laughs> <laughs> would don't ever okay. want to think about the, the like the retail market here while uh, I'm living my personal life. I will. I, I guess I will do my best to do that. I wasn't going to go into any specifics, but yes, I will do better thank, with that. Um, thank you, thank you. I uh, so appreciate it. Nihilus also huddles the group together and whispers, "Should we tell her about her brother in the future?" I don't know that it's helpful. But like she can like we can warn her like keep an eye on her brother. Well, she was le she was in such denial before. I don't know if she'll hear us. Mm. Maybe there is something to say like in a vague way of does she know that we traveled from from the future? Maybe we can mention that to her. Okay. She doesn't know that. Um okay, so uh Aradia gently says um do you know th this journey has taken us many places one of which was into the future have you heard of something like that before and she pauses for a while and says uh i've heard i'm much older than i look and no uh yes believe it or not i am <laughs> Uh, I've heard of that happening and I know, uh, our sphinxes who run the judicial system can do that. Of course, they don't like to being creatures of law and order. Um, anyways, so yes, I've heard of that possibility, but I've never personally seen it. Well, I don't know what the future will be now because we have in some ways affected it, but it is important to know that things are very different and that there won't always be two of you. Oh! <laughs> when you say that, a robotic creature pops uh -oh. into existence about the size of a Labrador, um, but it's a square shape, and oh. it is a monodrone, and it is recording something. It is just writing something down, and um, hold on, and it's making the classic it's got one eyeball i'll show you a picture if i can get to it i like to imagine that it's um uh uh, uh Wheatley from portal 2 it's Is very that... similar it's circular actually I, I was mistaken it's circular it's got one eyeball and it's got wings and it's uh very spindly arms it it, it like if this thing were to it's just not threatening at all, but it's making a noise. It's and this is straight from Dice Camera Action, Chris Perkins. Uh, it's going, wee woo, wee woo, wee woo, <laughs> wee woo, and um, wee woo to you. And Suha looks. This all happens like as soon as you're saying that. It happens the instant you're done saying that, and uh, after about ten, fifteen seconds, it blinks out of existence and Suha goes takes a deep breath and sighs and goes let's just uh keep I believe you uh I will say that you're the first and with the presence of a monodrone appearing let's just not talk about that anymore whoa 
and she gets very serious, like, like even a little scared, um, five percent scared. Uh, you, you <laughs> notice. Um, otherwise, can we do a, roll? Can all can all. We do a f roll on that? No. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, and and then she just. Aradia nods with understanding. Okay. And her brother comes back, Zahur, and he's got a diamond in his hand. And um, he walks over and hands that to... Prati. No! <laughs> <laughs> I'm the one who asked for it. <laughs> I'm just fucking with you. Um, he hands it to you, and you now have a diamond... A, a very good diamond worth a thousand gold, um, which should be used. I believe it's used in some spells. Oh, yes. Uh, and he says, I've had that for a while, and just know I don't, I don't uh, easily give away my treasure. And uh, walks back to his throne, takes a seat, and he... His sister catches him up on what you guys spoke about, and when she tells him about the monodrone showing up, he uh, has a similar amount of apprehension and shock, <laughs> and uh, addresses you guys about the establishment, and he, and he says, um, well, I'm disappointed to hear you won't be in the fairer side of the city, but I understand why you might want to be in the northern side. And regarding the orphanages, in case you're interested, we will be appointing vetted and um, safe head people of those orphanages. Um, and, uh, yeah, is there Not anything... Not to push Niolis into something, Aradia's oh, whispering this, but is this maybe the time to ask about your sister getting into a college? Who's Ooh, throwing no. that out? <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, um, yeah, uh, sure. I wasn't really paying attention, but um, hey, uh, and Suha, hi. You two are so influential. Uh, I. <laughs> I I was wondering if there was any possibility that uh, there is um, a Triton living in one of the orphanages, orphanages right now, and she really wants to attend like the best school for magic. And I was wondering if there was any way you could like uh, help us out with that. I'm sure we could arrange to have a letter sent to. Do you know what school she would? I keep telling you, you need to listen to her when she tells you what schools <laughs> she wants to go to. Um, it's not the wandering college. We know that. It's not the wandering one. Islingstead. <laughs> yep. That's oh, are, the... uh, are you an adopted uh, brother of this? Of No, no, no. Oh, he just, just pays attention to he pays attention to your sister? Um, okay. I have so much going on right now. Oh my. <laughs> it's just been so hard. Is this is this is this uh Nihilus being uh real or is he is this a like I don't know, do a perception check. <laughs> <laughs> well that's that's not how that works. You have to make a deception check if it's fake. <laughs> um, yeah, he's trying to uh, make himself look better. <laughs> so he's to make a deception check. Faking, faking this. Uh, let me see what my deception is. Uh, plus three. I got a 16. Um, I have to look up the stats real quick. Stats, everybody. Stats, everybody. This is too long. Um, although I am really appreciating the dancing. I didn't even know that you guys could, you know, bring that kind of a game. Oh wait, let's see. Who's? 
I, to me, this is um, uh, 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 Dave. I was just looking to see if like we could be touching. Oh, yeah. Can we do a wave? <laughs> I don't know who I'm connected to, but I'll do that. Oh, it was a fun try. For those of you on the podcast, we just tried an arm <laughs> wave. Uh, and the silver, or the, um, the, the Suha and Zahur look at you and go, okay. Uh, so Islingstead is the one then? Do they believe me? <laughs> you don't think so. Okay. <laughs> yes, that's, that's, that's. Also, would you would you care to uh, have a letter sent to the Wandering College, specifically their school of, of performance? <laughs> I feel like that's a read, and <laughs> <laughs> and um, no, not okay. for me, thanks, okay. <laughs> sir and ma'am. Uh, and uh, yeah, so they agree to send a letter to Islingstead. In uh, Vera Mall. Cool. Islingstead. That's uh, close to Ilvermorny. <laughs> no. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you <laughs> for knowing that. <laughs> that brought like. Where my potter's he- potter heads out. Yeah, that brought like. <laughs> sa- uh, I-, I was initially excited, but then sad because I was like, well. It's so tied to some of the things that just aren't as good as the other stuff. So uh, yes, and also like a horrible appropriation of Native American culture. Yeah, uh, yeah. The the uh, mythological creatures is fine, but um, the other stuff. Uh, yeah. Um, okay. So, is there anything else? I guess we uh, just all cry together for a while, huh? I am trying to reconnect <laughs> with some of my Kenku brothers and sisters, uh, and I don't know much about the neighborhoods in Innis or Ista, but um, I just don't know if if we can do anything for them, like, uh, you know, give their neighborhoods equal, uh, you know, police protection or uh i don't think it, anything it, like that suha says i don't think there's a very one of the controlling gangs of torch key points is a is a kenku led gang called the uh dead goblins and i don't think they would appreciate m- us sending more regulators in there, but if I can look into it, I can talk to High Regulator Octo and get his opinion of it. Uh, if you'd like, um, are uh, you? No, it's, that's all right. Uh, yeah, I, I'm just looking for any type of, you know, if you're gonna, if you're handing out rewards, just give my reward to that neighborhood of Torch Key Point. We can, in in your name, or would you like it anonymous? Anonymous, please. Wow. Okay. Yeah, we can do something. Um, Aradia is also going to ask for something, but before she does, what do you think Sarah would want? Well, I think she got what she wanted with the, uh, she's getting a business license and a storefront. Yeah. Okay, good, 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 good. Um, What does Aradia want? Love. He, you know, no, and it's more <laughs> concrete than that. Um, uh, Aradia says, so you are older than you look, um, as I've been told. Um, so I can only assume that, were you also alive during the erasure? Uh, yes. Um, we were both in... Yeah, we were both alive. Do you know what happened at all? If there's any way to to bring back what we've lost? Uh, 
We do not. We've, we were part of the uh, conclave that put together the Aspel Arcana and... Uh, Aradia very subtly spits when they say her name. Or say the Aspel Arcana's name. Just very subtly, though. Just like, <laughs> like it dribbles out of your mouth? or Yeah, no, she just goes... Like, she just spits on the name. That's all. Okay. Um... <laughs> And oh my god, <laughs> um, we banded it really brought together the continent and the world of Exoros to try and figure out what happened, and it ended the the war of Envir, and we were unable to find out what happened. All we know is what you know pretty much, which is literature and books and knowledge were erased from not only written forms but people's minds and to varying extents and we have no idea why but any attempts to many clerics of Ayun tried to appeal to her and they were not only not answered, but all of their powers that they previously had disappeared overnight. And we suspect that something happened to the goddess Ayun, but we don't know anything. It's all speculation on our part, but... Um, Aradia takes out uh, her book, The Adventures of Kirsgard Night Song. And um, and from Marty and shows it to them. And she goes, well, I don't know if, if you would have any insights on this at all, but uh, I don't need all of the books to come back. I would just like this one to come back. Have you had any? And wow. they take it from you. Uh, they don't walk up to you. They just levitated over to themselves with probably mage hand you suspect uh and uh zahur takes a look at it and kind of raises an eyebrow and says we did find obviously we sent regulators to the gid ward for security and to search the rest of the orphanages and we found something you may be interested in uh, and he goes back um, to where he went previously, quickly comes back this time, and he hands you the same book you gave him. Uh, and he says, you may find it a bit different than you... Uh, the story is just surprisingly different when I glanced at it. It's not the tip, it's not what it was like. He's essentially saying that um, the book you're referencing is like a moderately famous book, correct? Is that mm -hmm. how you, mm -hmm. and so he would be familiar with it and, or they would, and uh, he says, Interestingly enough, uh, this one is in the inverse of everything that book was. It, it has the same characters, but everything is more dark and more... Does that make sense? Yeah. Aradia takes it and thanks them and puts both of the books together back into Marty. Also, just on a personal note, Catherine really genuinely teared up when that book showed up. And then the moment that I heard that it was a little different, I stopped tearing up. So I don't know what's going on with me internally about my connection with Aradia, but it's gotten intense. <laughs> so... Welcome, welcome to uh, Dungeons and Dragons. Um, I was like, oh my god, we're, we have the book, we have the book. Oh, it's not really the book. Well, <clears throat> one anyway. of the... Uh, <laughs> Zuhur continues, and we were told they found this in in uh, 
one of the orphanages, uh, one of the head people's offices, and um, quite honestly, it wouldn't have come back to me if it wouldn't have been different, if it would have just been another copy of that book, I'm sure High Regulator wouldn't have bothered presenting it to us, but since it was so uniquely different, um, that is why we have it. So, uh, Well, if you wouldn't mind just asking, if they do find a regular copy at all sure. that's still working, I would love to see it. But um, in the meantime, thank you so much for this. It will be helpful, I'm sure. Not a problem. Uh, anything else? Nope. 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 No. Okay. And the two ever watchers of Anista go, bye. <laughs> <laughs> <No>. uh, <laughs> bye. Uh, <laughs> and uh, Kofer bows and escorts you out. I and... grab his hand again. Jesus Christ. <laughs> right, I just start smacking Nihilus on the shoulder. <laughs> Uh, your DM almost got involved in the woke Olympics or whatever we're calling it. <laughs> uh, and so you exit the castle of Innis, uh, in fortune's favor and, um, you are left and basically what they would have told you is, um, that there is a, an establishment, there are two establishments that they can give you in Innis, and one of them is in uh, the Deference, on the border of the Deference District, as well as Midtown, and then the other is in, um, on the border of Pate Point and the Arbor Green. And, I like... yeah, go oh, ahead. Go ahead. No, no, no. If you uh, want to give us more info. Yeah, you know the Deference District is where the uh, temples and uh, clerics and paladins, That's a, it's a very small area, and Midtown is where you guys went, where the small uh, Cobalt Reserve branch is, and that's just north of the Arbor Green, and then um, the other place is the Arbor Green, which I've... You guys know because that's where Venture Ventures is. Uh, and Pate Point is a more upscale neighborhood like Fortune's Favor. Just uh, It's more like Pate Point and Fortune's Favor are like Beverly Hills and Brentwood. <laughs> Yes, that's where we want to live. Both of them. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, which M Midtown and Deference District or Pate Point? Pate Point. Yeah, it's closer to Venture Ventures, so. It's yeah, that was exactly easier. my thought. Okay. Yeah, plus Nihilus' favorite program is the Real Housewives of Pate Point. <laughs> <laughs> Let's make that show. Let's make that show. <laughs> I would make that that show an audio sketch show, but yeah. Um, so Pate Point establishment, and what we'll do with that, guys, is I will send you kind of a floor plan, uh, and you can rearrange walls in your renovation. Uh, your renovation will cost money, obviously, so you'll need to hire. And if you want to spend more money to get it done quicker, you can do that. Uh, and I assume a radio will not be wanting any part of this portion of it. But um, so, yeah, I'll just send you a, a rough floor plan and you can arrange it how you would like. Hold on, wait. Why do you think I don't want any part <laughs> because of it? Because money and paying people and uh, interest no, and shit like that's... that. Oh, I was going to say no, that. No, 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 no. Paying people is fine. I don't want to hear about the, like, the, like, what is it? I don't want to hear about, like, the real world aspects of budgeting for this house. I don't want to hear about that. But I would like to help. Uh, I would like to help us make decisions about 
what our home. Oh, looks okay. Like. But like, I'm talking about the like, okay, this will cost this if we want to do this, that oh, type yeah. of stuff. Yeah, I'll probably let other people handle that, sure. but then pick the rug. Yeah, pick the rug we're getting. Mm-hmm. That sure, that's right. <laughs> uh, we can turn. <laughs> yeah, we can turn this into a uh, a, a Sim City simulator. Uh, See, that is fun. That's fun. What I'm saying is I would never listen to a podcast that was talking about the like, like, sure. okay, and so the APR, and then if you were going to Yeah, I wasn't going to do that. It. Yeah. Yeah, I wasn't going to do that anyways. Uh, I would have just told you a straight up number. Um, Great. So, yes, you have that. And also with um, Innis and Ista, uh, if you ever want to turn it into a warehouse that you can move around you can do that, but it costs oh. a shit ton of money. Uh, and dealing with the Aspel Ar- Arcana a little bit. And then we can and then we can name our house Growl's Moving Castle. Doo doo. Sorry, I could have been better at laughing at that. It was good. I got a very long text message while you said that, and I was like, "What is happening?" And then. Sorry. <laughs> no, it was a stupid joke, and I loved the silence. But you know what? <laughs> but you know what? I I have trained you that I will be there for. I know, and then you and then you weren't. So I know. So I'm you, sorry. Fuck your house. <laughs> fuck your couch. <laughs> <laughs> um. So uh, about this time, um. You uh. Who's got the uh, insignia again? The what? The uh, drow insignia. Uh, oh, uh, Sarah. Sarah. Okay. Uh, Sarah goes, oh, guys, I think, uh, ooh, she starts digging through her her uh, bag. <laughs> My mind went real dirty. <laughs> I don't doubt digging it. Digging through her vagina? What the fuck? <laughs> you know? Well, because... Is that they what you thought? Like, looked down. <laughs> like they kind of like looked down, and he was like moving his arms a little bit. So I was like, uh. <laughs> and she said, "Ooh." <laughs> so <laughs> I can see how you got there, but also that's how you look at through bags as well. So yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know if you go ooh. <laughs> Sarah would. <laughs> um, so she, but searched... she's also dirty. So. It's true. Uh, she starts <laughs> digging through her bag, and she uh, reaches in, and the ins- drow insignia is glowing and burning and, uh, yeah, just heating up, and it was heating up through her bag onto her leg. And she goes, guys, I think this is, something's happening with this. Aradia, do you know anything about this insignia and how it works? And I'm rolling. <laughs> well, you I told you what it did uh, last episode, I think. Um, just that it holds spells. Oh, that it's like a wand? No, um, it's it, more like a... Um, you had to be a high member of Drow Society in a house in a drow house, and it was used to store spells, so essentially giving you more spell slots, and each house would have their own insignia and have their own certain spells they would keep in those, depending on which house it was. Yes, yes, yes. And, um... And now we own a house. You... That's true, (laughs) but it's not related. Uh, (laughs) Oh. Um... Damn. You would also not be surprised. You, the drow would not let it fall into the hands of someone it was not intended to be in. Um, so also you just received this book as well. Uh, it it could. You're not sure what it means, but it could, um, just that it's heating up may mean, uh, that someone's looking for it or, uh, yeah, it's not lighting on fire and burning Aradia, the bag. 
Aradia takes the insignia and puts it on the bunny. Oh my god. <laughs> I mean, hold on, wait. It's not going to burn the bunny, right? I'm just imagining you're, that. It's you're warm, trying to burn the bunny. Gonna... How? And I'm the horrible one. She's literally <laughs> she's joking harming again. She's just innocent joking. creatures, and I'm the horrible I one. I mean, like, I can Auntie touch Aradia it. Auntie Aradia is so funny. I can touch it, so I assume it's not burning me. It's not going to burn the bunny. I just want to see if it's having mm. a reaction mm-hmm. to the bunny. Mm-hmm. No, no reaction. Mm-hmm. Um, it starts to cool off Yelp. Uh, oh. <laughs> as time goes on, and uh, yeah, you have that now. But also, everyone who's not watching this is missing Dave's like amazing miming of yeah, Bunny fantastic, love. <laughs> really high high quality stuff uh, going on on Did the. Did you stream. train in Paris? We <laughs> oui. les mime school. Uh, so. You guys head to Paint Point, and uh, you find your establishment. They would have you would have told them which one you would have preferred, and they would have told you the address. And your establishment is um, a three-story house with a Ooh. with two turrets uh, rising up in the corners, and it is in rough shape. It uh, is being held together, you think, only by the grace of the arcane fountains that flow throughout the city. And it looks old, decrepit, and when you walk in there, there's a person sleeping on the floor with, like, various food items. I don't know how we should feel that this was all <laughs> our reward. This was all your, part of your reward. Um, I know, but the, I, I still feel strange Prady just immediately it. goes to a closet and finds a broom and just starts like, <laughs> my God. So Prady goes and starts sweeping, and he starts sweeping near the man who's sleeping, and the man uh, who looks... Sorry, sorry, it's, just, like, it's me, it's not you, Amna. You didn't, you're not a messy person, I just have to make this cleaner. He's very messy, just, and he smells you're... horrible. Um, you... He smells of alcohol and such, and he wakes up and he goes, uh, 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 "Cliff, get out of here! This is my this is my spot." And... No, it's not. Not anymore, sir. A radio oh. just starts barking at him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one of these days, I'll lay off the booze. Uh, do you? Do I get know out of here? Guys? My... Normally that scares people enough that they just go. <laughs> uh, who, uh, there's room upstairs if you're looking for a place to crash. No, you need to go. No. We own this house. We live in it now. We you own need this to go. Go. Now. go, sir. Go. Uh, well, no, thank wait, you wait, for, wait, wait, thank wait, you wait, for wait, asking wait, wait. my name. We don't. We haven't talked about whether we want him to go yet. This could be to. our. This could be like Todd from BoJack Horseman. This could be our house as Todd. <laughs> no, I don't want it. What? I we don't know, we don't know anything talking. about him. My name is Look Blarney. Look how dirty and gross he is. Blarney. 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 What's your profession? Blarney. Uh, Do you think he has you. a profession? <laughs> Professional uh, hobo. Thank you for asking, sir. Nihilus takes a takes a hit at the. <laughs> <laughs> Is that, are they even now? I think we're. I think they're even. Um, I thought they were tied. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, Aradia pulls ahead. Uh, uh, Blarney goes. Thank you for asking, sir. I am a. Uh, and he pauses and he's thinking and he goes. I am. Go. I am what they call a manager slash. Uh, uh-oh, I don't like slashes. <laughs> <laughs> I am a manager. Just salutes whatever comes afterwards. If it's uh-huh. a slash, it's just salute. I am a slash uh, consulate. Uh, no, that's not the word. Um, you need to go, sir. Uh, <laughs> to go. But listen, uh, if you guys own this place, I can, uh, like, uh, I Would just... Would you like to be a servant, a repairman? Can no. you, DJ? Can I what? I can do anything. DJ. Yes, I can do that. He's just like a man about the house. He's a kept man. You we are answers? collectively going to have a kept man. He, um, no, we're not. He he pulls out a jaw harp. Do you guys know what a jaw harp is? 
Is yeah. it like a harmonica? Girl, 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 girl. Dave's got it. It's he starts. Bow, 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 bow. And he's actually pretty good. I don't care. <laughs> and Alice is pissed. And he he uh, goes. Hey, we can play. I can play my spoons with you. Yeah, there you go. Uh, oh, somebody get a jug. Let's make this a regular band. Nice. <laughs> and he goes, no. just please. Oh God, I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna throw up. I shouldn't have oh eaten that. Oh my God. Uh, and he and he runs. He doesn't throw up in the house. He runs outside and throws and up. And we lock the doors. And the the door is halfway <laughs> off the hinges, and the windows are broken out. So he tries I the door, and he goes through water. the. <laughs> Around the house. Do you have wall of water? <laughs> I do have wall of water. <laughs> Don't waste a spell slot. <laughs> now we have a house. We can sleep whenever we want. I'm going to look up the spell so I can see how to get around it. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can't get around it. Uh, so you cast wall of water. It's concentration. I will cast gust of wind on your ass, too. <laughs> get out of our house. <laughs> So it's only one foot thick, or you can make it. I think one foot thick is pretty impressive. It is. It's it difficult is. terrain, so he would just have to spend half his movement to get through it. <laughs> uh, and he does. He falls through the water, oh and he's God. soaked. I like the idea that he's like in the water for yeah. a little while. Yeah, you see him, and you're not sure if he threw up again because you see some spittle come out of the water. <laughs> <laughs> so like there's a portion like there's a portion of the wall of water that's like yellow brownish uh as he's he was super dirty as well so he's getting cleaned now oh. and uh he he yeah, falls through too real he goes oh you guys are magic users huh oh uh <laughs> this is gonna be fun and, no, it's not. And uh, he goes, uh, whew, but I feel better. Regulator. Can I call a regulator? And that's where we're going to leave it. You guys dealing with <laughs> Blarney for 2018. Blarney. <laughs> and oh, uh, Blarney could be our Todd, guys. Come no, on. I Con refuse. Congratulations, guys. You now have a place yeah. that you can call your own, possibly make money if you so choose. You can fix it up. You can. Uh, you also got your sister into Islingstead Institute for Good Wizardry, ratings. and Aradia got a book. <laughs> <laughs> it's more important than having. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Prodi was charitable, and um, yeah, so. And helped helped his people yeah so um proddy wins the uh, woke olympics even though well okay hold on wait he was like at least two points down he can tie with a radio i think i think he can tie or at least tie with okay Nile. that brought me down so he now wins <laughs> the olympics. Fine. It's he won. <laughs> yes <laughs> and um that's where we'll leave it. Thank you for joining us uh, in 2018, and uh, we'll see you in 2019 uh, for to see what happens. We got some great guests who are gonna come on the show, uh, so stay tuned for that. And um, it should be great. It should be a great new year. I hope your holidays go well. Why don't we plug anything we need to plug? Starting with Catherine. Oh, dear. I wish I was better prepared for this. I do have things that are happening. I'm going to be on Richard's podcast in the new year, Interview with a Nerd. So I will uh, plug that. I talk about my deep love of K-pop group BTS. Bong we, Bong get we, get we get too real. We get too real. Wait, we get too real. We get very complicated in the things <laughs> that we're talking about. So anyway, tune in <laughs> if you want to talk about the morality of celebrities and how much you're allowed to give them. Um <laughs> Uh, and otherwise, you can find me online at, Kath Good. <laughs> at Catherine, not IRL. That's Catherine, K-A-T-H-E-R-I-N-E, -E, not in real life. And you can always, if you're really just missing my face, you can watch the fat one on YouTube. Richard. 
Hi, hi. My name is Richard Cardenas. I'll be your DM for the night. No. Um. Okay. <laughs> uh. Yeah. I have two podcasts. I have Awkward Human Survival Guide and Interview with the Nerd. Um. I got to see Aquaman super early. Uh. So I am going to be posting my review of that. You're like Aquaman in Venture Ventures. Yeah. Am I? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's not as much of a dick as Nihilus is, but well, I'll he'll like I'll take it then. Uh, so yeah, uh, watch out for that next week, and that's pretty much it. Uh, you can find me on all social media at Let Richard See. Uh, Dave. Um, this Thursday, nine o'clock. Um, my movie form team is putting on a movie. And this is at the uh, Moving Arts Theater in the east side of Los Angeles. There's also going to be a couple other guest teams. So check that out if you're in the area. And also, I would like to just plug um, just love. And (laughs) uh, over the holidays, a lot of people can feel lonely. (laughs) Or even if you're not, you know, it can be a time where if you're with people, you can still feel lonely. Just, you know, just plugging mental health and reaching out to people and just you know agree love that's that's perfect segue uh and uh we will say just be excellent to others and to yourself and uh make sure you take some me time and And don't pet bunnies be careful of the bunnies because they (laughs) may be Wolves so in sheep's She's clothing. So funny. <laughs> Auntie Aradia is so funny. <laughs> Thank you for watching episode 18 of Venture Ventures, uh, actual play D&D show. And that's where we'll leave you. Thank you so much.